Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another Arcade's voice acting. Since last week I covered the voice of the Autobots leader in Season 3 of the Transformers, I decided that this week I'd cover his second in command, Ultra Magnus. I have seen videos of Jack Angel before and he seemed very interesting. And boy did it pay off to learn about him. He's one of the most interesting people I have researched and I could listen to him talk for hours. Well, I did listen to him for hours. Born on October 24, 1930 in Modesto, California, Jack mentioned that he always was a jokester as a kid and he'd always try to make his mother laugh, thinking that if you can make the goddess of everything you know laugh, she's less likely to take a swing at you. When Jack was 10 years old, the production company came to Berkeley, California where he lived and they were looking for 12 years old boys to be in a movie. His mother sent his brother, who was 12 and didn't want to go, and she sent Jack to accompany him and Jack wanted to do it, but he was too young and he kicked himself for not lying about his age. Coming out of high school, Jack wanted to go to the Pasadena Playhouse to learn about acting. Needing money, he enrolled in the army and sent money home to his mother for her to put it in the bank for him, but she spent it. She told him she would pay him back, but Jack told her she had no job and no prospect, so how could she reimburse him? So instead of going to Pasadena, he enrolled at San Francisco State University where he majored in radio and television, when television was in its infancy and radio was transitioning from Lone Ranger type show to what we have today, disc jockeys. He did radio for 18 years, and within his first decade he had become one of the most popular radio personalities, being heard on KMPC and KFI Los Angeles. Radio is where he began experimenting with voices, doing voiceover for commercials. Eventually, Jack's demo tape ended up in the hands of Gary Owens, another radio personality turned voice actor, who forwarded the tape to his agent, and after almost 20 years in radio, Mr. Angel switched to voice acting on a full-time basis. He eventually discovered Waldy Burr, and the rest is history. But before we get into the cartoons, I want to share a couple of things that Jack spoke of that blew me away, and it's hard to put a timestamp on these but most of this stuff happened in the 80s, parallel to his voice acting career. Jack spoke a lot about commercial voiceover at his 2012 TFCon panel, which gave me an insight on a side of voice acting I have little knowledge about, and it's fascinating. This is what I can piece together from the various stories and questions he answered. Jack emphasized about being the guy for a company, saying that to make it big in commercial voiceover, you really just need one person to fall in love with what you do to get a major contract. Jack recalled that the Budweiser account was one thing he came close to get, what he calls a retirement maker. He did the audition and 7 out of 8 people wanted him, but 1 out of 8 wanted Danny Dark. And the 1 was the boss, so Jack didn't get the gig. This was a guaranteed $1 million yearly payout. Like he said, you're in it for the fun, but also for the money. Jack spoke of how Danny Dark also made a million a year doing NBC's promo, how Michael Bell bought a house solely on the residuals from his parquet commercials, and Ernie Anderson who was doing promo for ABC also did a million a year. Jack did get a contract with NBC doing the promos for The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson for 10 years. Promos are quick segments in between shows telling viewers what will be playing later in the day. Jack got it because Donnie Dark, who was NBC's main promo guy, and Jerry Bishop, their second guy, didn't want to do it. Calling Jack's agent, NBC asked for a suggestion, and when he mentioned Jack's name, NBC said, oh, we know Jack, he's okay. Boom. Jack got the promo contract doing the writing too, since no producer wanted to do it. That was a $150,000 contract. This goes to show that being likable is something that does pay out. A lot. Now on with the cartoons. Of course, as mentioned earlier, he voiced Ultra Magnus. Then we will go our separate ways, but the next time we meet, it will be as enemies. Reprising the role from Robert Stack from the movie, Jack brilliantly brought to life one of my favorite characters, who still can get a mainline alt mode with a car carrier that can fit a car inside. But that's not where Jack got started. Before all that, he voiced Hawkman, Flash and Samurai in six iterations of the Super Friends. He was the voice of King Zarkon, Yurak, and Kosak on Voltron Defenders of the Universe. Then he worked on the Transformers, and on top of Ultra Magnus, Jack voiced Cyclonus, replacing Roger Carmel after his passing. Yes, 
as soldiers on opposing sides. But before doing those icons of season 3, he had previously worked on season 2, voicing the gambling smoke screen. It's all in the wrist. The powerful Omega Supreme. Just this once I will talk the way I did on Cybertron before the betrayal. Triple Changer Astro Train. If we can't have the energy crystals, no one will. Which he reprised for the movie. Jettison some weight or I'll never make it to Cybertron. The Stunticon Breakdown. He's gonna jeopardize the Lucy. And the idiot Ramjet. Maybe not, but I can still ram. <laughs> Continuing his season 3 and 4 work, he voiced a sweep. Long live Galvatron! Arcana. Brainstorm. His mind is undisciplined, but I find his youthful ideas most refreshing. And Sentinel Prime during Rodimus Prime's short circuit induced near death experience. We turn to stealth and invented the art of transforming. Now let's discover his most known work, because the totality of his work is a pretty big list. On G.I. Joe, a real American hero, he was Wetsuit. And in Beetlejuice, he was the preacher. Do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? On the show Tailspin, he did nine characters, including the High Marshal and Detective Thursday. He was the voice of the best version of Nick Fury we ever got in the 1994 Spider-Man animated series. He was Nicky from the movie Balto as well as Superintendent Chaplin from Hey Arnold. You may know him as McTavish from The Wild Thornberries or Thud in A Bug's Life. He was the voice of Teddy in the movie masterpiece with the worst possible ending, AI. In The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, he voiced the master computer. And in Finding Nemo, he portrayed Mr. Johansson. He was the voice of the pirate captain in Avatar, The Last Airbender, which I only mention because it's an awesome tune that everyone needs to watch right now. But don't watch the live-action movie, please. In video games, you may have heard him as Rom Mock from Star Wars Dark Forces, or both Henry George Bowers and Spittin' Jack Sanchez in 1997's Outlaws. In Grim Fandango, he voiced Bruno Martinez, Chipito, and Seaman Naranja. He is Mayor Buckwash in Ratchet and Clank, Pansa from Shadow of Rome, and Amon the Corsair from Pirates of the Caribbean's At World's End. And in Final Fantasy XV, his performance brought to life Sid Sofiar. Oh, and I almost forgot, he voiced Papa Smurf three times being in the Smurfs 2 video game, the Smurf A Christmas Carol, and the Smurfs The Legend of Smurfy Hollow. That's just smurfing awesome. And if all of this wasn't enough, this talented man also wrote two books, The Book of Jack, his autobiography, and How to Succeed in Voiceover Without Ever Losing. From the latter, he presents an amazing perspective that you never get rejected in the voiceover business. You only get closer to the one job that's meant for you. If your ratio is 1 gig out of 10 opportunities, getting through the 9s that are not meant for you as fast as you can to get to the one that is, is a win. Don't carry a bag of losses because it will weigh you down and you'll just give up. And I think that can be applied to anything, like YouTubing. To any starting or experienced Transformers YouTubers out there that are getting frustrated by their views and subscribers count, don't give up. Give us your very best, that's all this community is asking for. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Jack Angel's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.